I go to theme parks for a living and these are my favorite things at Universal Studios Florida. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Molly's Favorite Things, the show where I, a theme park expert who goes to theme parks every single week, tell you my favorite things inside of the different parks. It's kind of like Oprah's favorite things, but instead of giving out concert tickets, money, kitchen utensils, I give out hot tips and fun advice. So it's basically the same. Now some of my favorite things are your headliner attractions and most tasty snacks, but some of my favorite things are a little more off the radar and I can't wait to share them with you. We got a lot to talk about here at Universal Studios, so let's get in there. Now if you haven't seen Molly's favorite things before, the way it works is that I have selected one thing in each land to comprise a list of eight different things across Universal Studios Florida. Again, these could be snacks, these could be rides, these could be shows, they could be anything I choose as my favorite thing. And yeah, it would be a lot easier to just write a list of my top eight favorite things, but for starters, most of them would be Diagon Alley. So that doesn't really seem fair to the rest of the park. And second of all, I'm competitive. So I took a map and I really circled everything on there, definitely in real time, definitely not a lipstick. And I chose one thing in each land. There were some tough choices. There were some not some tough choices, but let's get going. The first land you come to at Universal Studios Florida is called Production Center. Now this has got all of your guest services, like guest relations, ticketing, first aid. It's got your main gift shop, but it also has a couple of attractions, making it more unique than a lot of entryway lands in the different parks. You've got Despicable Me Minion Mayhem. This was a once 3D, currently 2D uh, simulator attraction where you go on an adventure with the minions. You are shrunk down to the size of a minion and enjoy an adventure with Gru and the girls. Right across the way, not opened yet, but we are gonna have Minion Blast. Very excited about that. Brand new attraction, gonna be a shooter style attraction with some new technology. Obviously I can't count that if that attraction's not open yet. You've also got Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket in this section, which is a very thrilling coaster. Straight up, you get to select what song you listen to. It's really fun, but honestly it gives me a headache, so that's gonna be a no from me. For me, the favorite thing pick in this land came down to two things. One, Transformers the Ride 3D. It's weird, I just wouldn't peg you for mechanical. Which surprised me, because I'm not a Transformers fan. I've seen one, maybe two of those movies, like the Shia LaBeouf ones, not the cartoon from the 80s. I don't know much about the characters, but I think that ride is really fun. It's a 3D simulator, but it does move you through practical effects, so it doesn't make me super nauseous, even though the Spider-Man one at the other park, which is the same ride technology, does. I think it's a lot of fun, plus I really like the meeting of the Transformers experience right outside. I think they're a really cool character meet and greet, because they're big, Bumblebee plays music, that one's really fun. I also, I am a sucker for the store inside a theme park. I love the big store when you come in that's got all the different merchandise. I find myself walking through these stores at any theme park on my way out just to see what I might need. So initially it was down to those two things. But then I remembered that something else is now considered part of Production Central and it made my decision a lot easier. Say hello to the Today Cafe. This was once considered part of Hollywood, which is our next section we're gonna get to, but on the map today, I noticed that it was part of Production Central, which means I really did choose this one today because I love the Today Cafe. Today Cafe is a quick service dining location themed after the Today Show, which I don't care about, I don't watch, I just like the food inside. Throughout Today Cafe, they are playing the Today Show, so just be ready for that. But I really like the menu in here. They serve breakfast all day, which is a win in my book. They've got pastries, they've got bacon, egg, and cheese sandwiches, and they've got a lot of kind of New York deli style sandwiches. I'm talking a caprese, I'm talking a beef brisket, I'm talking avocado toast, lox bagel. They've got a couple afternoon delights as well, including a cheese platter, a few salads, really good coffee. To me, it's something a little bit different, a little bit lighter than a lot of theme park food, and I have my favorite sandwich on the way. Say hello to my favorite sandwich on the list, the big apple cheese. So it's a grilled cheese with apples, roasted tomatoes, and three kinds of cheese, cheddar, pepper jack, and Swiss. Comes with potato salad, but I swapped in fruit salad. I am so excited. This one looks so cheesy. We're so happy you're here. You look ravishing and incredible. Thank you. 
Mm. First of all, there is so much cheese on here. I absolutely love, like, it's a it's a lot of cheese, which I really appreciate. I really like the apples as well. We're adding a little bit of crispness, a little brightness, a little sweetness into the dish. Speaking of sweetness, you're also getting that natural sweetness from the tomato, but you can taste that it's roasted, adding another element to this. All of it's on this buttery toasted bread. My number one place to eat inside the theme parks is Wizarding World of Harry Potter, because I think the food is great and the experience and the theming is great as well. But if you're looking to eat outside there, if you're looking for breakfast, if you are looking for something a little bit healthier, I love Today Cafe. It's usually not very crowded in here, so you can usually get a comfy seat. Great place to just enjoy a moment before you're heading out in the chaos. Moving right along into the Hollywood section of Universal Studios Florida. Now this is a little bit trickier of a location and a lot of people don't realize that this is technically its own land. There aren't any rides in this land. However, there is shopping, there is dining, there's often a lot of entertainment as you'll see different characters out here and there are two stage shows. Now the dining ranges from things like Swab's Pharmacy, which is an ice cream shop where you can get Haagen-Dazs as well as Dole Whip. Yes, that Dole Whip. You've got Mel's Drive-In, which is a 50s diner style restaurant, burgers, chicken sandwiches, chicken tenders, that sort of thing. You've got Cafe La Bamba, which is a sit down restaurant that's often only reserved for VIP tour guests or special events. You've got Central Park Crips, which did make my shortlist. It's a little crepe walk up stand with both sweet and savory crepes. But really, for me, it came down to the two shows in this area for the number one spot. You've got the Bourne Stunt Show, which is a very cool stunt show that mixes the same technology used in Fast and the Furious Supercharged with live action stunts to put you in the Bourne universe. And you've got the Universal Horror Makeup Show, which has been here since opening day. The Horror Makeup Show walks you through some of the special effects that the Universal Monsters are so known for. But which one do we pick? Do we pick Jason Bourne or do we pick the Wolfman? If you picked the Bourne Stuntacular, I'm sorry, you're wrong. We gotta go with the horror makeup show. Now, the Bourne Stuntacular is really cool, and I think one of the best stunt shows that I've seen at any of the theme parks, the way they fuse the two different technologies together is very impressive. So I highly recommend it if you're the kind of person that likes stunt shows. The horror makeup show is a classic. For starters, the Horror Makeup Show isn't an opening day attraction. It's one of very few things left from the opening of Universal Studios Florida, and it's really funny. It's definitely geared towards a more adult audience than some of the other shows you might see around theme parks, uh, and the hosts of it are very funny and make very cheeky jokes, very topical jokes. I laugh every time I see it. But not only is the show really entertaining, I highly encourage any movie fan to come inside the lobby here because you're gonna see props from real Universal movies like Jaws, like Jurassic Park, like The Grinch, like the original horror classic monsters. You're gonna see real props used in those films. Like for me, it doesn't get much better than this section about Jaws, including the real Ben Gardner that comes out of the boat when uh, Hooper tries to go underwater and finds the shark tooth. Uh, and then he drops it. You've also got a real egg and a real claw from Jurassic Park as real as a real clever girl. Clever girl. You've got a real Chucky used in one of the Chucky films, which is terrifying, especially when you think about the fact that Chucky is a house announced and confirmed at Halloween Horror Nights this year. Pretty stressed about that. You've got one of the Michael Myers masks as well as a knife from Halloween. You've got the Grinch right here. You've even got things as old as the mask from Phantom of the Opera worn by Lon Chaney. You've got things like uh, Frankenstein's monster's shoes worn in the original Frankenstein movie. You've even got, and this is one of the wildest things in here, I think, the knife used in Psycho, the Hitchcock thriller. If you are a movie buff, if you are a pop culture fan, and you don't have time to see this show, which again, I think you should, I highly recommend coming in here because it's really, really cool to take a look around. I swear this TV is new because I've never once paid attention to it and they're showing Jaws clips right here and I would definitely pay attention to Jaws clips. Maybe they've just been off in the past. They're talking about modern monsters and they are showing clips from Jaws so I'll be here for a minute. 25. Three tons of them. Don't wait for me. Now shoot it Quinn. Shoot it. Kill it Quinn. Oh, Brody, what are you going to do with that handgun? Hook another barrel. I'm coming around. Ah! What a movie. What a film. I'm watching this like I've never seen it. He's working his way right through that line. Yeah, and working his way to us. Ooh, Jaws 2. You know, Roy Scheider didn't want to do Jaws 2, uh, but he was contractually obligated by Universal. So to mess with them, 
he would continuously get more and more tan, which would really make the producers mad because the scenes are often shot out of order. So he would get like less tan and more tan if you watched throughout the film. And they were like, can you stop tanning, Roy, please? And he was like, nope, until he went and tanned more and more. I really like Jaws too. I don't think it gets enough credit. Anyway, let's go see the whore makeup show. Guys, this is important. Do not drink beer for breakfast. Right? It's because mommy does it doesn't mean it's okay. Right? She only does that because she's been stuck on with you for the last three years. One, one two, three, scream. Baker, if you don't know, 11 nominations, 7 Oscars. Uh, I know you've seen his movies, Men in Black, Nutty, Prof Nutty Professor. The Grinch. Uh, Harry and the Hendersons. And actually this one, his first Oscar winner. Kids, what movie is this? American Werewolf in London. Nice work, kid. 1981. American Werewolf in London. Rick's work with some innovative on this film. Actually, the very first Oscar ever awarded for makeup effects. What is wrong with you? <laughs> Oh, cigarette no, not you, the little punk. <laughs> it said you're lying. That kid is so drunk. <laughs> What's your name? Lexi? Yeah, where are you from, Lexi? They didn't tell you? <laughs> this is a Disney World, I don't have to be nice to you. <laughs> I really love horror makeup show and as someone who loves pop culture and learning more about movies and how they're made it's a really entertaining show plus it's a really great way to sit down get some air conditioning get a little break in your day i promise you're gonna laugh so that was a pretty easy pick actually welcome now friends to the woody woodpeckers kid zone which at the moment doesn't have a lot to offer but don't worry my pick was not affected now the Woody Woodpecker's Kid Zone is undergoing a massive transformation right now. All this stuff is under construction. Previously that had the Woody Woodpecker's Nuthouse Coaster, which was your kiddie coaster at this park. It had a water park area themed to Feifel from Feifel Goes West. It had a Curious George play area. It had a Barney show. And then at one point it also had a bunch of the characters at Universal at the dance party, the DreamWorks character dance party, where you could dance with characters from Shrek and the Trolls and Madagascar. And it was a lot of fun. I absolutely loved it and that's the only thing that could have come close to touching the winner in this land. It is being refurbished. The DreamWorks characters are all over the construction wall so it's heavily rumored and heavily expected that this will transform to some kind of DreamWorks themed kid area. Excited to see what happens there but for now there's only a few things left in this land. You've got the Kids Own Pizza Company, which serves quick service pizza. It's often closed and then instead used for special events like Halloween Horror Nights. You've got SpongeBob Store Pants, which is a SpongeBob SquarePants themed store where you can meet SpongeBob, Squidward, and Patrick and other characters. It's important to note, you can go inside SpongeBob's house. He's having a party with Gary. You can take a selfie with Gary. You also have Animal Actors on Location, which is a stunt show featuring live animals that have been in different films, things like dogs and falcons and pigs. It's actually quite cute and I enjoy it if you haven't seen it before and you're an animal lover. Another fun show to see, but you probably already know what the winner is. Honestly, not even close. We're headed to the E.T. Adventure. The E.T. Adventure is an opening day ride. It's the only remaining opening day ride here inside the park, and it is a fever dream, and I love it so much. It is part the last 15 or so minutes of the movie E.T., and then part you going back to E.T.'s planet with him to help save the green planet, and you're going to meet all of his friends, and it is going to be so fun. And you are going to smell that iconic smell that only if you've been on this ride do you know what I'm talking about. It is a delight. E.T. Adventure is a flying attraction similar to Peter Pan's flight at the Magic Kingdom, but it does have a 34, 3, 4 inch height requirement. And make sure you listen to Steven here because he's going to lay out the important scenes of the adventure. Oh yeah, where is that? Hello, I'm Steven Spielberg, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the E.T. Adventure. But I'm afraid we don't have much time, so I'm going to cut right to the chase. E.T. needs your help. Now, we've just received an urgent message from E.T.'s teacher, Botanicus, calling for E.T. to come home right away. You see, a big problem has developed three million light years away on E.T.'s home world, the Green Planet. 
E.T.'s friends are in danger because their planet is dying. Remember what E.T.'s friends look like because it's going to be up to you to help E.T. find them once we get him home and there's not a moment to lose because only E.T.'s magic healing touch can save his friends and bring his planet back to health. E.T. must go home and only you can help him. That's right, E.T. So why don't you show these people how we're going to get you back to the green planet? You and E.T. will be making your three million light year journey on these bikes, but don't worry, you don't have to pedal this out when E.T.'s ready to go. So good luck, everyone. And remember, E.T.'s counting on you, and so am I. Oh. It's up to you to save his planet so that he may visit us again. Make sure you get an interplanetary passport from the team members after the pre-show. You're gonna need that to phone home to E.T. I also love this queue. It's got real NASA spacesuits in it, and it's got little creatures like in the opening of E.T., and it even has Botanicus. <gasps> Botanicus is here, let's see him. Botanicus comes out to tell you all about all of E.T.'s friends like Tickly Moot Moot and Orbanon and Magdal, and those are the ones that need his help. He's very fun. Also, I'm in the express queue right now, but if you go through the regular queue, you can see Easter eggs from the film, like the Speak and Spell. E.T. normally doesn't get too long of a line. It was only 15 minutes, but, but since I have Express with my annual pass, why not use it? It can sometimes get upwards of 45 minutes. It usually will drop, though, especially in the afternoon, so I wouldn't wait too long for it if you don't have Express. Also, if you want the best seats, you want to be in the front row, and if you want the best, best seat, you want to be in the front row second from the left, because E.T. pops up out of the basket. <laughs> Every time I get off that ride, I'm just like, it's a fever dream. I love it so much. My favorite of E.T.'s friends, thank you for asking, it's Orbanon. He's the one that kind of looks like a mushroom and goes, welcome home, you have arrived. Who's your favorite? Is it him? Is it Dickly Moo Moo? Is it Botanicus? Is it Magdal? Share, share down in the comments. But this ride, a must do. It's so wild. It's just so wild. But also, it smells like nostalgia and it's delightful. Also, don't forget to take a selfie with E.T. as you're leaving. They do have photographers in there if you have the Universal Photos, but you can also just take a selfie with your own camera. And E.T. looks pretty dapper, so very cute. I love that ride. That would make a top list regardless. So easy choice here for the kids zone. Not gonna lie though, if they do something with Guy Diamond and some kind of cool trolls thing, it would make the decision harder. Welcome to Springfield, the USA, home of the Simpsons. This is our next land, and there is a lot to do for your Simpsons fans. There are tons of iconic eateries themed to the show. There's also two different attractions in here. As far as eating goes, you've got Bumblebee Man Taco Truck. Actually quite good, was on my list for the top choice. You've also got Lard Lad Donuts. You know in no universe is a donut shop on my list, but if you're looking for that big, iconic pink donut that Homer eats, you can get it here. They've also got ice creams. They can do donut ice cream sundaes as well. Over across the way here, you've got a food court that's got a bunch of famous places from the Simpsons universe. Most notably, I would say is Krusty Burger as well as Moe's Tavern. This is actually not a bad place to eat if you've got a bunch of different people that want a bunch of different things in your party because you can get a wide variety of stuff all in the same location. And you've got Lisa's Tea House of Horror, which is like sandwiches and salads and lighter items. You've got Luigi's for pizza, the Frying Dutchman for fish and chips, Cletus's Chicken Shop, I can recommend the chicken and waffles there, as well as the Krusty Burger. I feel like the Krusty Burger does a pretty good fast food burger. Universal tends to do a good job with their quick service burgers. And uh, you can really go wild with the Clogger Burger, which is a two third pound burger with bacon, secret sauce, cheddar cheese sauce, iceberg lettuce, tomato served on a bun. And you can add a milkshake to it and count that as a combo meal. They also have Flaming Moe's available here, which is basically a non-alcoholic orange soda with dry ice. I'm led to believe that's an iconic beverage from the story. The two and a half, I'll say, attractions here in Springfield. You've got Kang and Kodo's Twirl and Hurl. This is a Dumbo-style spinner attraction, except for it's funny because the aliens say comical things about how they're gonna eat the humans and take over the humans. But that's a good filler attraction if you've got little ones that can't ride anything else nearby or you want to hear the comical jokes. 
The half attraction, I would say, are the carnival style games. These are pay to play. You can get packages and there are a variety of Simpsons themed prizes you could win. But of course, the main attraction in this land is the Simpsons ride. The Simpsons ride is a simulator attraction with a 40 inch height requirement and it puts you in the Simpsons universe in crusty land where a mean guy named Sideshow Bob tries to murder you, but it's funny and okay. I actually, having never seen an episode of The Simpsons, think it's pretty comical. They make lots of digs at other famous theme park things like SeaWorld and Pirates of the Caribbean. And if you're into The Simpsons humor, you might quite enjoy it. The Simpsons ride is one of, if not the most nauseating attraction in this park. If you are motion sick prone at all, it is very, very likely to make you sick. It's not even in 3D, but something about the way that the theater is set up makes a lot of people incredibly nauseous. So warning, if you are a Simpsons fan, that you may get motion sick on this one. Now, as someone who's not a Simpsons fan, my top choice came down to two things. One, the attention to detail in this land. Like for starters, if this phone rings, it's for you, dingus. Answer it. It was Bart, he was prank calling me. But if you stand here and pick up the phone every time it rings, a bunch of different characters talk to you. So I love the attention to detail, but this isn't the winner. I bet you know what it is. It's beer, baby. Now I may not care about the Simpsons at all, but one thing I'm very passionate about is when theme parks have beers, specially made to that area that you can't get anywhere else. And the fact that they've got a Duff beer garden here, now that speaks to me. You can get Duff or Duff Light. I am a Duff Light fan. It kind of tastes like a Heineken or kind of any generic light beer, but a little more kick than something like a Bud Light or a Miller Light. I would say like a Stella or a Heineken is a good comparison. The Duff is a little bit hoppier. And then they also have during the fall season, Duff Oktoberfest, which is quite nice as well. But Duff beer is only available here in the Simpsons area. They have it over at Universal Studios Hollywood as well. And I just think it's so fun that it's a beer you can only get here. It's a beer iconic to the story. So I quite enjoy that. Another thing I quite enjoy is the fact that they've got these kind of tipsy bottles out here and they're all named things like Sleazy, Queasy, and Surly. And there's seven of them, so it's clearly a knock on the seven drawers. Moving right along into our next land, World Expo. And this is the easiest decision I made all day. And it's not just because Men in Black Alien Attack is an excellent attraction. It's because Men in Black Alien Attack is the only thing in this land. At least on the map, that is. There's a gift shop, there's a snack stand, there's a bathroom. But besides that, that's it. It's Men in Black Alien Attack and nothing else. So good thing it is an awesome attraction because it probably would have won regardless. Men in Black Alien Attack is a shooter style attraction. Think Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger spin at Magic Kingdom, but I actually think it's better. You are gonna ride through with the Men in Black, first attending Men in Black Training Academy, but then you are needed on an actual alien invasion. A few notable things about Men in Black Alien Attack, it does have a 42 inch height requirement, 42, so it's not a complete family attraction. Additionally, you do have to put your items in a locker unless you have just a lanyard or a fanny pack around your waist, as this attraction does spin. It doesn't spin enough to make me super motion sick, but it does spin with some quickness depending on how many times your car gets hit. But it's a really fun attraction. I think it's the best of these shooter style attractions, except for Mario Kart Bowser's Challenge out in Universal Studios Hollywood, because you're riding through big practical sets. You can pick up the gun and see what you're aiming at. A couple of tricks to maximize your score. One, you can hit the aliens more than once. The more times you hit the same alien, the more points you're gonna get. Two, the further away the aliens, the more they are worth. So aim for the ones up in the windows, far away. Number three, when you are going through the scene where they're gonna put you against another car, you're supposed to hit the sensor on the back of the other car. But there's no rule that says you can't just turn around and hit the one on the back of your car, which gives you the same amount of points. However, it is gonna make your car spin. So just a heads up there. Number four, hold down the trigger gun the whole time. Don't feel like you have to keep squeezing it. You're gonna tire out your finger when you can just hold it down. And number five, when you go into the final room with Will Smith, he is gonna tell you to hit the red button. Make sure you start hitting it as soon as you see Will Smith because the first people to hit that in your car are gonna get 100,000 bonus points. 
you know, if there's going to be a land with only one thing to choose from, I'm really glad it's Men in Black Alien Attack because I genuinely really enjoy that attraction and it would make my top list of things to do in this park anyway. So happy to see it. Stand solo and proud. Can you imagine if like Jimmy Fallon had its own land and I had to pick it on my favorite things list? I don't know what I'd do. From the easiest land to make a decision in to the absolute hardest decision I've made in any one of these videos, we have arrived at Diagon Alley in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. This is my favorite theme park land, not just in this park, not just at Universal, but anywhere in the entire world that I've been to. So I don't think I can say just the whole land. So let's walk through what some of the choices are. For starters, before you even get into the wizarding section of Diagon Alley, you've got this whole London section outside where you've got things like the night bus. You can often meet and chat with a night bus driver. You've got number 12 Grimmauld Place with Creature creeping out on people paying attention. You've got the Ministry of Magic entrance phone book right here. And if you dial magic on the phone, just pick up the receiver and see what happens. You've got King's Cross Station, which is home to the Hogwarts Express, which is an attraction that takes you from the this park, Universal Studios Florida, over to Islands of Adventure, drops you off in the Hogsmeade section, the other wizarding world of Harry Potter land. I do love the Hogwarts Express for many reasons. It's such an iconic set piece within the stories. Do note that if you'd like to ride that attraction, you're going to need a park to park ticket because it is taking you from one park to the next. But let's be honest, as much as I love the London section, the muggle section, the detail is amazing. None of this is going to win when you've got a fire breathing dragon fish and chips, ice cream, and more waiting for us inside. Should I say just walking into Diagon Alley is my favorite? Look at this. This will quite literally never get old. This is the most immersive and amazing land I've ever been in. As a diehard Harry Potter fan, it feels like I am truly immersed into the stories that I fell in love with 25 years ago. Just look at it in here. It's incredible. Honestly, the fire breathing dragon is a good choice for the top spot. She breathes fire every 10 minutes on the 10. So on the zero, the 10, the 20, the 30, etc. Don't think that she's going to breathe any other time. And also she's going to rumble and grumble. Wait a second and then breathe fire if and only if she deems it safe and not too windy because she's a courteous dragon and doesn't want to burn down the buildings. But the fact that this fire breathing dragon exists in Diane Alley and that's just a set piece. Whew, this is going to be some tough choices. When walking into Diagon Alley, you've got some of my favorite stores in the Wizarding World, specifically right here, Weasley's Wizard Wheezes. That's Fred and George's joke shop. There's so much detail in this store. Let's, we got to go in this one. Am I going to just go into all the stores? Is that going to be the point of this video now? Just me shopping? Anyway, it says shenanigans for all when you walk in, which is one of my favorite details. I feel like that's also applies to Mammoth Club. Fred and George are some of my absolute favorite characters in the story, so I love that their shop has been brought to life. I also love that they've got Umbridge working for them up here, that hag. She should do have to do some manual labor, you know what I mean? The merchandise is really fun in here as well. They've got all kinds of things, including pygmy puffs you can adopt, and they'll do a naming ceremony if you do. They've got Weasley's Wizard Weezes shirts and other apparel. They've got different treats like the Nosebleed Nougat um, and Fainting Fancies, which are just different candy treats. They've got some muggle practical jokes as well because their father, Arthur Weasley, loved them. Weasley's Wizard Weezes is definitely in contention for my favorite thing. Probably not as high up on the list. I do want to point out that this is quality Quidditch supplies. This is where you can get a lot of Quidditch gear, a lot of house gear as well. I've had my eye on this shirt forever because you can personalize your name on the back. Uh, you've got different Quidditch jersey in the four houses. You can also buy replicas of brooms, Quidditch themed board games, pins, bags, water bottles, all kinds of sporty stuff in your house apparel. These shops are both connected to Sugar Plums, which is the candy shop on this side. I'm going to be honest with you, Sugar Plums is not in the running for the top thing in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Not only because Honey Dukes is the bigger and better candy store over at the Hogsmeade side, but because there are so many more delicious and more fun things to eat in the Wizarding World than some of the items in here. I can't let this be on the list for this side, but you know, you should get a chocolate frog. Other notable locations in the land. Of course, you've got the Hopping Pot as well as the Fountain of Fair Fortune. These are both drink stands that sell things like varieties of butter beer, the signature Harry Potter beers, lemon squashes, fishy green ale, and other signature beverages here in the Wizarding World. 
You've got a couple more shops, including Globus Mundi, which is a lot of travel themed items. Wise Acre, which is just kind of your generic Harry Potter type store. You can find a lot of home goods, school supplies, collectibles, Christmas ornaments, etc. Here on the stage, you can catch two different shows. You've got the Tales of Beetle the Bard. This is a live action puppet show that tells the story of the three brothers from Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. Really, really awesome. Definitely one of my favorite, most underrated things in the land. You also have Celestina Warbeck and the Banshees. This is the uh, jazz soul group that Molly Weasley enjoys listening to. They perform live. Both of these shows I feel like are underrated and truly one of my favorite things to do in the Wizarding World is grab a butterbeer or a beer or lemon squash and sit right here and enjoy the live entertainment. Now one of the most underrated things you can do in the Wizarding World is head into the Gringotts Money Exchange where you can exchange your muggle money, plastic or paper, uh, for Gringotts banknotes and you can interact with a real Gringotts goblin. Thank you. Name, please. Molly? Very good. What's your name? Hello, sir. They're dollar for dollar. They've got 10s and 20s. It's a really fun way to spend money in the Wizarding World. It'd be a great way to give your kids a limited amount of money uh, that they could buy their souvenir with. When I personally bought my wand at Ollivander's, went and exchanged the right amount of money beforehand. So that way I bought my wand with wizard banknotes. So I do like that. That's an underrated hit, but definitely not my favorite thing in the land. And speaking of Gringotts, Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts, the headliner attraction in this land is certainly up for the title of favorite thing in Diagon Alley. This is a 3D coaster simulator that puts you inside Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows directly into the moment when Harry, Ron, and Hermione have snuck into Gringotts to steal the Horcrux out of Bellatrix Lestrange's vault. It is a very, very cool attraction, both practical sets and 3D effects. It is super, super immersive. The queue itself when you walk through Gringotts Bank is unbelievable. So this one is definitely on my list for possibilities. Do note, it can get very, very long. I'm talking 90, 100 minutes, many days of the week. It does have a single rider line as well as Express Pass. So if you are using Express Pass, this is a great one to use it on. My number one best tip when visiting Universal Orlando is if you can swing it, stay at one of the three premier resorts, Royal Pacific, Portofino Bay, or the Hard Rock, because you get Express Pass free for anyone that stays in your room. I did a whole video on Express Pass recently. I can help you out. Also note that Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts has a 42-inch height requirement and again it is a 3d simulator so it makes some people nauseous i'm usually okay with this attraction and honestly i'll risk it because it's so so cool a couple of other stores worth mentioning ollivanders you can do the ollivanders wand ceremony where one person per show will get chosen to do the ceremony and get their wand selected like harry in the sorcerer's stone but anybody can go to the show and anybody can go in and buy a wand from there You've also got Madame Malkin's robes for all occasions. This is where you can get a lot of your Harry Potter apparel, including robes, sweaters, t-shirts, hats. Possibly in my top three favorite stores around here, you've got Magical Menagerie. This is where you can adopt a magical creature to take home with you. Anything from a phoenix to a thestral to a hippogriff to a snake, you can adopt here. And I mentioned Ollivanders, but of course there is magic to be made around the Wizarding World. Here in Diagon Alley, there are several places where you can use your interactive magic wand to create your own magic. It is honestly one of my favorite things to do in the Wizarding World. And no matter how many times I've cast the spells, I'm always dazzled when the magic works. I also like that it's not super easy. It takes a few times to get each different spell, and that feels realistic. If you were at Hogwarts practicing, it would take you a while to get each spell down, and those can be really fun. Let's also talk about the food here in Diagon Alley. Some of my favorite food in all of Universal is here. For starters, Florian Fortescue's ice cream parlor is absolutely fantastic. Tons of different hard pack and soft serve flavors, including butterbeer, including chocolate chili, lavender, and my personal and Harry's favorite flavor, strawberry peanut butter. It is such good ice cream, some of the best I've ever had. You've also got the Leaky Cauldron, which serves somewhat traditional English fare. It's got fish and chips, which is my choice, as, as well as bangers and mash, shepherd's pie, fisherman's pie. Really, really immersive environment. Looks just like it did in the story. So honestly, both fish and chips from the Leaky Cauldron and Florian Fortescue's ice cream make my shortlist. So out of all the amazing things listed, what do I pick? None of it. If I am forced to choose a favorite thing, a favorite place in Diagon Alley, it's actually Nocturne Alley.
Your girl's a Slytherin after all. Nocturne Alley is everything I love about Diagon Alley, but with air conditioning and a Slytherin flair. Cause if I'm being honest, my true favorite thing about this land is the detail. I could and have walk around for hours doing nothing. I don't need a ride a ride, I don't need to eat a snack. I just wanna look at the detail and feel how immersive it is. I wanna read the shop signs. I wanna look up in the stores. I wanna see every little knickknack and nook and cranny because these are truly the most immersive and detailed lines I've ever been to. And Nocturne Alley is that times a million because part of the reason why a lot of people don't realize this is even here. You can get into Nocturne Alley right next to the Leaky Cauldron as well as across from the restrooms and people don't know that you can actually go down this area. It's got my favorite store in all of the lands, which is Borgen and Burks, which, yeah, that's the evil store, but you know what? Um, it's fine. It's got several different wand locations and truly the attention to detail in here is unbelievable. Just look up at this. Does this not feel like it goes on forever. Look at these moving posters, these moving wanted posters. You've got Fenrir Grey back here. You've got Bellatrix Lestrange on the other side. And you have the shrunken head singing. And one of the songs they could sing is Show Me the Way to Go Home from Jaws, because Jaws the Ride used to be here where Diagon Alley is located today. Jaws is my favorite movie of all time. So the fact that I get a Jaws nod here within Wizarding World, amazing. There's actually a couple different Jaws nods. I've talked about it in the Secrets of Harry Potter video, but that one's my favorite. Let's go into Borgen and Burks and see what they have for us today. Before we do though, one of my other favorite details, if you look right here, they are practicing some spells down below and it's a green light. Do you know what spell causes a green light? Hint, it's the murder one. You've got details in here like the Hand of Glory, which you see in the movies, but Malfoy actually purchases it and uses it in the books in the Battle of Hogwarts. You've also got the cursed necklace right here that he gives Katie Bell, which he really means to get to Dumbledore. You've also got the vanishing cabinet in here, which Malfoy connects with the one in Hogwarts in the Room of Requirement, and that's how he gets the Death Eaters in. And if you listen closely and put your hand up, you can both hear and feel the bird that he uses to test to see if it's working inside. You've got actual props from the movie up on the second story, including this Troll's Foot umbrella stand, which is mentioned quite frequently in the books and shown in the movies as well, because people, especially Tonks, keep tripping over it in number 12, Gribble Place. And in this case, you can see it rattling and shaking, and that's because of Boggart's inside. Of course, this is really a merchandise shop, so they sell a lot of dark arts-themed merchandise. You can even buy wands in here from some of the darker characters, including Voldemort, Sirius Black, Severus Snape, Bellatrix, the Malfoys, Death Eaters, Peter Pettigrew. You can also buy t-shirts that are marked for Borgen and Burks, Azkaban, uh, the Dark Mark, Deathly Hallows. They sell a variety of collectibles in here too, such as Death Eater masks, Bellatrix's knife that she uses to kill Dobby if you are a psychopath, jewelry, etc. It would make me evil if I bought Tom Riddle's diary to do my podcast notes in, right? $42, but it's leather. It's nice. And I got one at the Titanic Museum for now, but... So yeah, the detail in general in this land would be my favorite pick, but if I'm going to force myself to choose one area, it's gonna be Nocturne Alley. Moving right along, we have made it to San Francisco, where there are a couple of sneak attack favorites of mine, as well as a variety of food. Here in San Francisco, you've got Richter Burger, which is a quick service burger joint. You've got Lombard Seafood Grill, which is a table service seafood restaurant. You've got the San Francisco Pastry Company, which is exactly what it sounds like. You've got Shea Alcatraz, which is a full service bar next to my buddy Bruce. And that's kind of it as far as the food goes. Honestly, none of those things were in contention except for my buddy Bruce. Obviously, considering Jaws is my favorite movie, I love the fact that they, despite getting rid of the attraction, left Bruce hanging there for photo ops. And I do like to get a photo every time I come to Universal. But is Bruce hanging there enough to top one of my favorite musical acts and attractions in the park? The musical act in question, the Beat Builders. They're like the Jammeters at Epcot, but way better and way harder. They pretend to be a construction site, but then climb up on this scaffolding right here and bang on barrels and pipes with wrenches, and they make a lot of really good music live 
as if they are construction workers that are also drummers on the side. I adore the Beat Builders. I smile every time they're playing. They're a really, really good time. Highly recommend seeing them. Make sure you check out their set times in the Universal app. The attraction in question, Fast and the Furious Supercharged. No, I'm not kidding. Despite being heralded as one of the worst theme park attractions of all time, it's one of my favorites. Why? Because I love the family. And this attraction is as ridiculous as the movies. It features all of your favorites from the Fast and Furious franchise, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Ludacris, Tyrese, Vin Diesel, Michelle Rodriguez. There's even some very nice nods to Paul Walker in the pre-show area. You're gonna load a bus style vehicle because you are headed to a party, but what whoa, Owen Shaw, AKA Gaston from Live Action Beauty and the Beast is hot on your case. And then you end up in a ride or die situation with the family. Is this attraction ludicrous, pun intended? Yes. But is it my choice for favorite thing in San Francisco? Also yes. Now I'm sure some of you in the comments are yelling at me and you're like, I hate that ride. That ride's so bad, I don't trust you anymore. Okay, this ride's hilarious. Vin Diesel catches on to a drone-sized helicopter, jumps out of his car, murders a guy, and then slides back into the driver's seat. Okay, it's ridiculous, just like the movies, and that's why I love it so much. It's also got real cars from the series throughout the queue, as well as a couple of real props. And yeah, I'm not gonna tell you to wait more than 15 or so minutes for this attraction because I'm not gonna lie to you, it's probably not worth that. But if you've got Express Pass or it's got a low weight, if you too enjoy a Corona and live your life a quarter mile at a time, then I say you gotta ride Fast and the Furious Supercharged because it's the only attraction where you're gonna hear The Rock say Cookie Puss. Let's go, Cookie Puss. <laughs> and moving into our final section of Universal Studios Florida, New York. Here in New York, you've got two attractions and a wide variety of food and dining locations, as well as a good variety of entertainment. And honestly, there's a clear winner, but there are some good runners up as well. Not necessarily a runner up, but you've got Louie's Restaurant right here. It's quick service pizza serving those jumbo slices. And across the way, I'd be remiss if I did not acknowledge the fact that this is the Starbucks in the park as well. Rounding out the dining options, you've got a haagen -Dazs, an Annie Ann's, as well as Finnegan's Bar and Grill. Finnegan's is a sit-down Irish pub, as well as a full-service bar where you can get drinks to go. And despite the fact that I visit Finnegan's quite often, it doesn't quite make the shortlist for this land. What does make the shortlist for this land, however, is some of the entertainment. You've got Marilyn and the Diamond Bellas, a short show with Marilyn Monroe. That one's fine, but for me, it's more about the Blues Brothers show that happens here over on the side street. You've got the Blues Brothers that pull up in their sweet car and put on a rockin' show. I really enjoy that. You've also got singing an acapella band, but my other favorite of the entertainment offerings here is Vamos, which is a high energy Latin dance number. It's a street party. It's giving me West Side Story vibes. It is so fun. The music is great. The dancing is great. There's a lot of audience participation. It's a really good time. Honestly, getting a beer from Finnegan's and watching the Vamos and then technically in the next land, the Beat Builders, one of my favorite things in Universal. And again, like I said, there are two attractions in this land as well. The first is Race Through New York starring Jimmy Fallon. Do I even have to pretend like that was in contention? That's one of my least favorite attractions ever. It makes me so, so nauseous. I know kids like it because they think it's funny. If you're a diehard Jimmy Fallon fan, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. But it's a 3D simulator featuring a lot of gags from the Jimmy Fallon show and I, I just can't get behind it. It makes me so, so sick. But lucky for this land, there is a clear cut winner. Revenge of the Mummy. This is a part dark ride, part roller coaster attraction featuring the Brendan Fraser Mummy movie. <laughs> The theme to The Mummy is that you are headed onto the set of one of those Mummy movies and everybody on set, except for Brendan, believe in the curse of Emotep. And once you get on the attraction, you are gonna find out whether or not it's real. It is an awesome attraction. It is so much fun. Hit 60 miles an hour. It's a great use of practical effects like fire. Again, it's part dark ride, part roller coaster, all awesome. Note that the mummy is very popular and can get a long line. So it's a great use of express pass or one to ride in the evenings. It also has a single rider line, which will split your party up, but could get you on much faster. Additionally, the mummy is an attraction where you're gonna need to put your items in a locker and it has a 48 four inch height requirement. So let's round this baby out with a trip to see Brennan and see if he gets that cup of coffee. I 
adore the Revenge of the Mummy. It's one of my favorite rides in all of Universal Orlando. It's my favorite ride inside this park that's not Harry Potter related. Definitely a must do for me when I'm at Universal. Again, an easy choice in this land, but followed closely by the live entertainment, which I feel like people sleep on here at Universal in general. Well, friends, that is a wrap on Molly's favorite things here at Universal Studios Florida. I feel like we had a good mix of I feel like this was a pretty good mix. We had a couple of food and drink items in here. We had some headliner attractions. We had some underrated things as well. So let me know what your favorite thing is inside this park. Let me know which park you want me to do favorite things in next time. In the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe, follow us on social media, join our Discord. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly, and it's been so magical. Now go watch the Islands of Adventure version. Bye!